Hey everyone, Martin here, and welcome back to another Top 10 video. This time, we're continuing our little chain. We're back with Pokemon. I wanna be a hero. If you missed the last two lists, go check them out. But we're picking up where we left off. We're at Gen 3 for real this time. Some basic rules for the list. Number one is obvious, but only the 135 Pokemon introduced in Gen 3 will be counted. And since Galarian forms are technically from Gen 8, they are excluded from this list. Two, this is based on my personal time with these Pokemon, i.e. training, using them throughout the game, etc. Three, remember that this is my own personal list, so if your favorite isn't on here, it may be on someone else's. With all that out of the way, let's get started. I wanna be a hero, okay, this list might start out rough, so why not be bygones be flygons? The Pokemon that can cause sandstorms just by flapping its wings, and Anakin Skywalker's worst nightmare, we have Flygon. Flygon was one of my best Pokemon in one of my Pokemon Y playthroughs, and for good reason. It has pretty even stats across the board, with attack and speed stats being the highest. It has an immunity to electric type since it's part ground, and ground types because of its ability, levitate. Sadly, it does have the usual weaknesses to dragon and fairy types, and the major weakness to ice types. So let's try and counter them with some attacks. Through a level up, it can learn a lot of dragon moves, like Dragon Claw, Dragon Breath, Dragon Dance, Dragon Tail, and Dragon Rush. But dragon is only half the typing. It also has moves like Bulldoze, Crunch, Dig, Super Power for ice types, Bug Buzz, Earth Power, Earthquake, Boom Burst, and the one-hit KO move, Fissure. Now let's talk coverage with some TMs. We got moves like Fly, Steel Wing, Air Slash, Breaking Swipe, Fire Spin, and Fire Punch for additional Ice-type counters, U-Turn, Solar Beam, and Draco Meteor via Move Tutor. But, now that Sword and Shield are out, we gotta add an additional section for the Pokemon that are in Sword and Shield, the Technical Records List. With moves like Flamethrower, Outrage, Iron Tail, Heat Wave, Dragon Falls, and Stone Edge, it can certainly do some real damage against the opponent. Flygon is a really good Pokemon, but due to only having used it in the one playthrough of Y and in Pokemon Go, it couldn't get much higher than this. The Pokemon that can send a 10-ton truck flying with just one hit, Hariyama, takes my number 9 spot. Hariyama has been a part of a few teams of mine, most notably being in one of my Omega Ruby playthroughs, and it was one hell of a hard hitter, with its attack stat being almost the highest stat, second to its HP. While everything else is... uh... not the best, it should be able to bulk through some of its weaknesses to land some attacks back onto the opponent. So, let's go down the list. During level up, we have Arm Thrust, duh. Force Bomb, Knock Off, Vital Throw, Close Combat, Reversal, Heavy Slam, and its signature move, Smelling Salts. For TMs, we have moves like Smackdown, Brick Break, Rock Slide, Blow Sweep, Payback, Poison Jab, Giga Impact, and believe it or not, Surf. Hariyama is a good fighting type Pokemon to have on your team, but it's not my ideal fighting type to have. Aren't I subtle? There's a reason it's called the Blade of Grass. The Pokemon with arm leaves as sharp as swords, Sceptile, takes my number 8 spot. Sceptile was chosen for the first time when I started Alpha Sapphire, and while it started out as a type advantage against the main baddies in Kyogre, it certainly had other positives. With the highest stats of speed and special attack, it can get some quick damage in against the opponent. This changes when it mega evolves, where it gains more attack and a small increase to defense, but special attack and speed stay at the top. 
And with the gain dragon typing, along with the ability lightning rod, it gains an immunity to electric attacks while also increasing its already high special attack stat. But it does have two more weaknesses while multiplying the ice one into a times four. Let's try and counter those weaknesses with some attacks. During level up, we have Dual Chop, Pursuit, Mega Drain, X Scissor, Leaf Storm, Night Slash, Fury Cutter, and what once was its signature move, Leaf Blade. For TMs, we have moves like Dragon Claw to help counter other dragons, the Sunny Day and Solar Beam combo, Low Sweep and Focus Blast to help counter Ice types, Earthquake, Energy Ball, Acrobatics, Bulldoze, Rock Slide, Grass Knot, and of course, Frenzy Plant via Move Tutor. There are also other tutor moves like Dragon Pulse, Outrage, Thunder Punch, Throat Chop, and Iron Tail to counter fairies. While Sceptile is low on the list, that doesn't stop it from being my favorite grass type from Gen 3. You have the ultimate mashup, the beast with the power to create continents, and the leviathan that can create entire oceans. Which would come out on top? A green lizard boy. Pokemon that lives high in the ozone layer, Rayquaza takes my number 7 spot. Despite having its main prominence in the Gen 3 games, I actually first caught one in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but I didn't fully use one until and after the Delta episode in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And when I finally got to using it on my team, I wondered how I didn't use it until then. With its high attack stats and every other stat not falling far behind, this serpent certainly is super powerful. And when the fervent wish of the player reaches it, it'll Omega Evolve without the need of a Mega Stone. And when that happens, each attack gets an increase, with the attack stat still being the highest. And being a dragon flying type, it has 5 resistances, 1 immunity, but at the cost of 4 weaknesses, with ice being times 4 effective. Let's counter the counters with some attacks. During level up, we have Twister, Ancient Power, Dragon Pulse, Extreme Speed, Air Slash, Crunch, Fly, Hyper Beam, and Outrage. For TMs, we have moves like Dragon Claw, Ice Beam, the Sunny Day Solar Beam combo, Flamethrower, Focus Blast, Sky Drop, Shadow Claw, Dragon Tail, Surf, and Waterfall. There's also, of course, Draco Meteor and its signature move, Dragon Ascent, via Move Tutor. Rayquaza is this low as it's only ever been a part of my team in the post game, so I've had less time to use it, but it's still earned a spot on my list. Hoenn is such a beautiful region. Nice characters, Pokemon, and sights to see. But seeing it from above? I could do that for eons. One half of the Lottie twins, Latias takes my number 6 spot. Similar to Rayquaza, my first encounter with Latias was in Heart Gold where she was a wandering Pokemon in the Kanto region. But her first real use on a team was in Gen 5, specifically in White 2. After that, she was caught in my Alpha Sapphire playthrough. She has fairly balanced stats, with the highest being her special stats and speed. This changes slightly when she Mega Evolves, adding more to everything except HP and trading speed for defense. And with the Dragon Psychic typing, she has 6 resistances, but also 6 weaknesses. But she does have an immunity with the Levitate ability, so that's a plus. Now, let's start with some attacks. During level up, we have Dragon Breath, Zen Headbutt, Psychic, Dragon Pulse, and its signature move, Mist Ball. For TMs, we have moves like Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Charge Beam, Energy Ball, Steel Wing, and Surf, with the additional Draco Meteor via Move Tutor. Latias is hands down my favorite of the Lati twins, but sadly, she also has a similar case of being used in the post game. But she still holds a place in my heart. I wanna be a hero! Okay, bye. Hope you're not tired of dragons yet. Simply known as the dragon Pokemon, Salamence takes my number 5 spot. My first experience with Salamence wasn't in the Gen 3 games, the Gen 2 remakes, or even Gen 5. 
It was first used in Generation 7, specifically in Moon, where I tried looking for a Bagon for so long that I actually found a shiny Spearow before I found a Bagon. And when I finally got one and evolved it, it became one of my most powerful Pokemon on my team. With its high attack, defense, and speed stats, it can definitely deal some damage against the opponent. And when it Mega Evolves, each stat gets an increase, minus HP, with attack and defense being the highest stats, but both special attack and speed sharing the third highest stat mark. And with the ability Aerolate, any normal type moves that it knows becomes flying type, making it get the additional stab power. And like Rayquaza before, the dragon flying typing makes it have the same resistances, immunities, and weaknesses. So let's get right to the attacks. During level up, we have Fly, Dragon Breath, Zen Headbutt, Dragon Tail, Crunch, Flamethrower for Ice types, Dragon Claw, and Double Edge. For TMs, we have moves like Earthquake, Steel Wing for Fairy types, Shadow Claw, and Giga Impact, with, of course, Draco Meteor via Move Tutor. Salamence has certainly done a lot to get this high, especially with the amount of dragons already on the list, but I can say that Salamence is my favorite dragon type from Gen 3, knowing that it can land here at my number 5 spot. It's surprising that it took me this long to see how cool this next one was. A Pokemon with ice armor from freezing moisture in the air, Glalie takes my number 4 spot. If you had the special Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire demo and were anywhere that wasn't Japan, you had the chance to add this to your team right away, which is exactly what I did once I was at the proper level. Only one thing to say about its stats, and that it's even across the board. When the Mega evolves, it gains an increase to the attack stats and speed. And with the ability Refrigerate, any normal type move it knows will become Ice type, gaining the bonus stab damage. And with the pure Ice typing, it only has 4 weaknesses to worry about. Now let's talk attacks. During level up, we have Freeze Dry, Ice Shard, Bite, Frost Breath, Crunch, Headbutt, Ice Vein, Blizzard, and the one hit KO move, Sheer Cold. For TMs, we have moves like Hyper Beam, Payback, Avalanche, Hex, Bulldoze, and Giga Impact. For TRs, we have Ice Beam, Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Gyro Ball, Dark Pulse, and Iron Head. Glalie is a pretty chill Pokemon, and it was a nice one to have on my team, but I couldn't get much higher than this. I still like it though. I wanna be a hero. Okay, when it comes to pseudo legendaries, this one steals the show. The signature Pokemon of Steven Stone, Metagross takes my number 3 spot. This was a Pokemon I didn't fully use until Omega Ruby and Moon. Omega Ruby specifically had the shiny Event Beldum, while Moon had the normal one I caught, each of them being a powerful member of each team. With its high attack and defense stats, it can take some hits and lam some back on the opponent. And when that Mega evolves, each stat, except HP, gets a boost, with defense now being the highest stat. And with the Psychic Steel typing, it has an immunity to poison types and resisting 9 other types. But it still has 4 weaknesses to deal with, so let's get some moves so we can take care of them. During level up, we have Hammer Arm, Bullet Punch, Zen Headbutt, Meteor Mash, Psychic, and Metal Claw. For TMs, we have moves like Psy Shock, Sludge Bomb, Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Aerial Ace, Gyro Ball, Rock Slide, and Flash Cannon. With Ice Punch, Iron Head, Stomping Tantrum, and Thunder Punch via Move Tutor. Metagross is a good Pokemon, and has been a great addition to the teams it was on. But it couldn't get much higher than 3rd place. But this Steel Pokemon can wear bronze with pride. I want to be a hero, Pokemon! What do you get when you cross Ken from Street Fighter and Poultry? This. My ideal fighting type from the Hoenn region, Blaziken, takes my number 2 spot. And similar to the three Kanto starters, my first experience with Blaziken was in Pokemon X and Y, where it was the special event Speed Boost Torchic. After that, it was used in one of my Omega Ruby playthroughs. 
Both times, it was pretty much my ace Pokemon on the team. With the high attack and special attack stats, with the decent speed and HP stats, it can deliver some really good damage fairly quick against the opponent. And when it Mega Evolves, it gains a large boost to its attack, special attack, and speed stacks to inflict even more damage, while also gaining the ability Speed Boost for increased speed each turn, which I tended to use a lot, coupled with Flame Charge, to pretty much guarantee going first. Speaking of attacks, let's go over those, shall we? During level up, we have Flame Charge, as previously mentioned, Slash, Brave Bird, Sky Uppercut, Flare Blitz, and what once was its signature move, Blaze Kick. For TMs, we have moves like Flamethrower, the 90 Day Solar Beam Combo, Aerial Ace, Brick Break, Low Sweep, Overheat, Focus Blast, Acrobatics, Shadow Claw, Stone Edge, Rock Slide, Poison Jab, and of course, Blast Burn via Move Tutor. There's also other two new moves like Fire Punch, Dual Chop, Heat Wave, Thunder Punch, Super Power, and Bounce. Poiseken is hands down my favorite fire type from Gen 3, but despite having everything at its disposal, it was just short of number one. Before we get to the number one, here's some quick honorable mentions. Cool Pokemon, but I've only used it on one team, so honorable mention it is. Really cool Pokemon design-wise, along with its Mega Evolution, but I haven't really trained that many Absols to truly connect with it. With Latias on the list, her brother had to be mentioned on here somewhere. Reason for having one over the other and not both is simply because I've trained more Latias than Latios. Still good Pokemon though. Yeah, these had to be on here somewhere. Great cover Pokemon, and the Primal Reversions are just awesome, but the Rayquaza beat them both in the end. Real neat Pokemon and super powerful, but each time you use one, it's either post-game or an event, so I haven't gotten to use it much. I wanna be a hero! Pokemon! Ah, starter Pokemon. Such a tough decision at the start of everyone's Pokemon journey, and the final evolution truly shows their full strength. So, of course the one I like the most is one that isn't even our own starter. The final evolution of Wally starter Pokemon in the original Gen 3 games, as well as the signature Pokemon of the Gen 6 champion, Gardevoir, takes my number one spot. Just like the three Kanto starters in Torchic, my first experience with Ralts was in Pokemon X and Y. And while I did get the gift Ralts from Diantha in the postgame of X, I caught one legit in one of my playthroughs of Y. I will say that I used it so much during the course of the game, that by the time I finished the main story, my Gardevoir, Aerolin, was level 83. And it was during this playthrough that I gained a newfound respect for this Pokemon. Kudos to those who understand my nickname choice. With its high special stats and speed, it can get some massive damage off against the opponent. Yeah, it has low physical stats and HP, but take the good with the bad, I suppose. When a Mega evolves, its three highest stats are increased, with an additional small increase to attack. It also gains the ability Pixelate, which turns normal type moves into fairy type moves. And speaking of moves, let's go over the list it's got. During level up, we have Dazzling Gleam, Psychic, Dream Eater, Future Sight, and Moonblast. Might not seem like much, but let's dive into the TM list. For TMs, we have moves like Magical Leaf, Hyper Beam, the Three Elemental Punches, Icy Wind, Swift, Draining Kiss, and Mystical Fire. For TRs, we have moves like Thunderbolt, Psy Shock, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, Energy Ball, and Grass Knock. A lot of these moves can make Gardevoir a really dangerous Pokemon in almost any battle. And I don't usually do this, but my personal move list for my Gardevoir is Moonblast, Magical Leaf, Thunderbolt, and Psychic. Anyways, regardless of what moves you give it, or how much... <clears throat> fan art people have made of it, Gardevoir is a really good Pokemon and definitely takes my number one spot for all of Holland. And that's my list. Hope you enjoyed. Have your own opinion? Leave your list in the comments below. And until next time, see ya!